This ball represents the vehicle in which I began my journey. It connects my past to the present, and I hope after I've done telling you about the history of it, it'll allow me to pass it on to the future. I represent a generation of women just like me. Okay, we were, here, we were there back then, we're still here now. In this Title IX milestone year, we're celebrating 50 years. We're celebrating its intentions, remembering, celebrating the victories, and keeping up the fight. We have to keep up the fight. We have to demand more. 50 years ago, it opened doors, but not on any of those doors was athletics. Athletics slid in under activity. My question to you is when you think about those 50 years ago, do you think about who the first ones were to peep through those doors? to walk through those doors, and in some cases, burst through those doors? You have to, because those trailblazing women broke a new set of gender, racial, social, and political barriers. I was one of those trailblazers. Now, we chat the youth today for not knowing their history. We have to connect the dots and fill in the gaps so that they can know their history. They don't know what they don't know. This ball has a story and a history of its own, and I'll get to it in just a minute. But not only were we Title IX trailblazers, we were also AIAW trailblazers, which was the Association for Intercollegiate Athletics for Women. We were also WBL trailblazers, which was the first women's professional basketball league in the United States. And they governed for 10 years before the NCAA took over in 1982. We call it the triad. And these three, in 2018, was the WBL, 2019 was the AIAW, and this year Title IX goes into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame as trailblazers of the game. Our generation either represents part or entirety eight of the 12 trailblazers of the game. Maya Angelou says, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. We want to tell our story in, all, in our own words with the hopes that it lands on the hearts and the minds of the listeners that you become more educated, that you become more elevated, and in the best case scenario, that you become inspired. My Title IX journey began in Rockdale, Texas. I was a product of segregation, and then integration, and of course, naturally, assimilation. I came from a loving family with a powerful mother, loving siblings, cousins, the church family, the African-American teachers who taught us and prepared us for integration, I was being prepared to be a pioneer and didn't even know it. The thing about it is, girls basketball was big in Texas. Some places didn't get to play. I started, and I believe in speaking people's names. My first coach, once we integrated, was Wanda Mercer. And she said, you have got to come become more aggressive. I listened and I never looked back. Hence the bandit, because I would take your arm off before I'd let you get a shot, <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right. After that, I went to high school where Ernie Lawrence and John Shoemake, two white men, believed in me, pushed me, and told me I could do great things. I excelled. Title IX had come along during this time, but we didn't know what Title IX was. We didn't know the role it would play in our future, and we certainly didn't know the role we would play in its future. I left and headed up the road to Temple Junior College to play for legendary coach Frances Garman. She's a Hall of Famer and taught us history. She taught us about the AAU days, the women who played before us, and the importance of knowing it. She taught us what Title IX was and what she hoped it would provide for us moving forward. And we, in turn, won the first junior college national championship for her. I headed out west to play for Dan Ayala, who had just recently left Jerry Tarkanian and the Running Rebels to take over a program that was a year old. There's Miss Garman. There's the junior first junior college national championship team this team, Dan Ayala, at UNLV, we became the first scholarship athletes at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Four of us on that picture went and played in the first Women's Professional Basketball League, the WBL. Now the history of this ball. This is one of the original balls. This is the 28.5 that has revolutionized the game today. It was not debuted in the WNBA, the panel ball version of it. It was debuted December 9, 1978 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where the Chicago Hustle defeated the Milwaukee Does. We won. 
<laughs> it was a crowd of about 8,000 excited, mostly curious fans to see what these women were going to do. Okay? We put on a show. We had become a generation of firsts. And can you imagine 1978 after graduating from college and being told there's a women's professional basketball league? We had just received scholarships. And if that wasn't enough, we now get a chance to play women's professional basketball. Just think about that, 1978. Okay? So I want to talk about the fact that there, we have to connect the dots, but I want to talk about the other leagues as well, if I can give them a mention as well. The 70s was a, game of rev was a time of revolutions and seminal changes. And that, yes, that's Billie Jean King, still in the midst of everything today, isn't she? <laughs> she threw up a ceremonial ball toss at the Chicago Hustle game. And if you notice the fans, that was the Chicago Hustle fans, we had great crowds. Started off with eight leagues, went to 14 leagues, 17 folded, and then finally nine leagues in the third year. Bill Byrne, there's that ball, was the founder of the league. We are more than the three years we played. Yes, we folded, but we are not a league that failed. We are a league that propelled the game forward. Okay. <laughs> One of the greatest impacts we've had is in the coaching field. My fellow WBL sisters and I represent over 1,000 years and counting of coaching. If you played in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, you most likely played for a WBLer. We took on, and I want to acknowledge, those are the leagues that came before the WNBA. I speak their names as well. This league never got off the ground. WBL, the first viable league, LPBA, WABA, NWBA, LBA, WBA, the ABL, and now the WNBA. Why is our story important? It's important because every time you leave out anybody, the African-American women in that league had a major impact on the WBL. And when you leave out the accomplishments of anyone, everybody's cheated. You're cheated. You saw hidden figures. How did you feel? I felt cheated when I found out that history. In 2018, we were inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame as trailblazers of the game. We had the honor of playing, visiting the great Lucy Harris. Where can you find us? You can find us in your universities. We still hold records. Our jerseys hang from the rafters. We're at the Hall of Fame. The kids today said, I, to, to be her, you have to see her. We were there, we're still here. You need only look. And one of us won and just won an Oscar for best documentary short, Long Live Queen Lucy. <laughs> These are my Legends of the Ball counterparts. We, our mission is to promote the historic and social relevance of the WBL to inspire future generations to break through barriers like we did, realize their potential like we did, and become leaders for positive change. We offer scholarships. We pay it forward. These women here have an extraordinary history. We became the first African Americans on our teams the first All-Americans, the first woman to be drafted into the NBA, not a, not, a, not a gimmick, that was Lucy, the first female to sign a contract, Annie Myers. And now we stand before you ready to pass it on and pay it forward. So what do I want from this opportunity? What do I want you to take away from this opportunity? That you have to know your history. You have to appreciate that history. You have to take the baton that we were given. We did and became everything Title IX intended us to become. It was a journey that we took on gladly. Now I ask you, who can I pass it to? Who can I pass on this glorious history to? I'm serious. <laughs> I can pass it to you? All right. Thank you.